What's up, everybody? So today I have been asked to speak at an event. It's an acting one-on-one -on -one event. And um, like I told you guys, one of the things that I, you know, can talk about on my channel is um, acting and my experiences and any advice you guys might need or any advice you can give me. Hell, uh, no, you never know who's on here. So anyway, um, I'm going to try to film a little bit of that so you guys can catch a glimpse. And it's just kind of like one of those days. So you guys can just get an idea of one of the many things that I do at times. So I had to just get some gas and got me a little coffee. Yeah, second video with coffee in it, ain't it? Starting to look like I got a problem. Don't judge me. Y'all stop it right now. Anyway, I'm gonna check back in with you. Um, I have to watch this road, so uh, we'll be back in a second. Bye. No selfies, no filters, no TikTok videos, none of that. Okay, that is ghetto. Like, it, but if nobody gonna tell you, you won't know. Because people think like, oh, I'm acting on TikTok, I can send this up and I have got, I've gotten TikTok videos. And the thing is, I just kind of laugh at it. But some people just really don't know and don't understand. So that's why I'm changing that. That's never okay. Everything that you need to do, you need to always act as a professional and deal with people as if they are um, professional when it comes to casting. Um, as I said before, when you go into auditions, it's really about confidence. Who, mostly I model, mostly do modeling. Okay, so y'all know about confidence. It's the same thing. When you walk in the room, you all in the room the same way as you would if you were doing a photo shoot. If you lack confidence in your photos, or if you lack confidence, of course, in your audition, it's not a show up, and we don't know we don't know show. I brought somebody with me today who is an expert in acting, and I thought that she would be the perfect person to come and talk to y'all. I actually have two people coming. Another one is a surprise. Um, they both died, I guess. So the first person I have here with me, she has been on several seasons of Taina on Nickelodeon. Um, if you guys are familiar with Nickelodeon, um, she also won Shark Tank. Which is the show on reality <laughs> TV. Um, she is also an author. She is a singer. She is a monsterpreneur. Okay? Um, she and I are actually producing our first reality show together. Uh, no, I'm not about to do that. It's okay. Okay. We're producing a show together. She and I, I'm going to say I'm going to say I'm going to say I'm going to but, but she is she is she is very notable. She's very credible. Um, she is perfect to talk to you guys today. So give a big hand oh, for Latangela Nusa. Because that's money. 
like stupid money when they go into overtime. So it's like if you gonna sit there and not be prepared, you know, and all that good stuff, then you know, time is ticking. And even for kids, because I started as you know a child actress, and and even before I was on television, you know, I started real young in pageants and stuff. And they just don't play. You did you did your pageants? Oh yes, pageants. Mom was crazy. Then some people are like the blue is standard. So I think always staying up on game and like knowing who you're auditioning for, just like a job, you know, kind of having a little background story on the, on the employer is always, you know, impressive. And then like a little personal story about yourself or something like that. It's because everything is casted so realistically nowadays. So if whatever, if you can find you in that character somehow, I don't give a damn what you think everybody else is. Like if you know she she, she should have said it like this. Don't rewrite that script. Though. That's annoying to them too. Like maybe yeah. an ad lib here and later, but they don't want you to rewrite it. By no means, take what I wrote and make it yours. Put yourself in it. Um, and there's always there's normally something in there, you know. And there might be something that you're like, you know what? I didn't even think of that. Especially the, the hardest ones are the one line. And I was going to say that social media now plays a part of, I was going to talk about branding. Yeah. Branding yourself is very important yes. because now people go to your social media and decide if they want to cast you and for the part. And, and I know she's acting, she's all school acting. She's listening, she's like, this is how she's using. All actors hate this, like, we've got it there traditionally. No, and I want to respect both ways, though. I respect it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that, yeah. Yes, I respect that they created a new lane, though. Like, I'm like, okay. Now, because that's what I do. So now when I go to get ready to catch people, I will go to your social media page. Right? So the next person I want to introduce, I really want to do reality TV, y'all. And we got like a couple more minutes, and we got two more things we have to do. So I brought one more person for y'all to meet today. Um, he was on, let me look up the name of the show, because I want to get it right. Hold on, I got it right. Thank you. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show on a TBS called Lost Resorts. Um, and then I know there's another show that's getting ready to come out. I think Bob was just promoted it. It's called um, After Hit, uh, I think it's After Happy Ever After. Um, so it's a both are I, I know they're both game shows. I don't know check it out. One is a baby show. So anyway, I'm not gonna get into I'm gonna hear show. I'm not gonna own show. But anyway, my guy Ron is here. Um, and he, I'm gonna introduce himself. I run out. I run the whole game today. <laughs> yeah. I, you can say whatever you want to say. I just need to talk. Oh, um, okay. So, uh, Lost Resort was not a dating show. It was more geared toward. I didn't say that. Retired, he was also a contractor, so we were still overseas and felt like we were in the military. 
But we were in Saudi Arabia, like, we can't drive. They can drive now, women, but that's recent. But, like, we couldn't drive, we couldn't do nothing, we wrap up every time we went out. So my mom was like, hey, so can we go to New York? <laughs> and my dad was like, no, let's go, let's go. So we went, and we were there for longer than we expected until I booked Taina. So having that, you know, if you have kids that are, you know, you got parents or people around you, like, that was that was big for me because she never told me like I couldn't it wasn't possible or nothing like whether we had the money or not so that I think helped um, and the you gotta know like I think I knew when I wouldn't quit but it, there is no I don't care what nobody tell you there is no overnight success there's a couple of times where somebody's like been like you know. Shamal, you know, like Kamor was was spotted by Chanel, Kamor Lee Simmons. But then after a while, you still gotta. If she tells you about her whole journey, though, like that might have been the start, but it might have been a whole lot that happened after that. A whole lot of time before money came. Even before I booked Taina, I was. I mean, Nickelodeon told me no, no, you're not. It's like I had been up there so many times in that building. I'm telling you, right there off of 42nd Street, or whatever, like on Times Square. You still that building and I used to go up there all the time like for auditions and be like callbacks too sometimes. It took me a long time before I got a callback. And when I got callbacks they still told me no. And then they thought they just knew what they wanted me for. And I was the lead on another show um, that was based around a show called um, I mean a, a repertory company called City Kids and it was called Wet. And I was the lead on that. We never even shot the pilot for that. They were like, you know what, never mind. We're gonna do Taina. We want you to play with so we just come on in and read it. And with that one I remember it was in the evening time, it was an odd time they had me come in the building. I was like, hey, that's how I wish you play it with And then I just knew it when I walked in the room. I was like, I, I, I got this one. This does. And then everybody got their phone call. Like, because you know, we're friends. We got friends in the business at that point. So mom's calling each other. Like, you guys call me here? Like, they called me here? Everybody got a call with me. <laughs> and it was like nine something at night. Everybody got a call. And I was like, what is happening? I know it was. And my mom, she went to the bathroom, she started praying, she came out, she said, don't worry about it, they're going to call you, they're going to call you tonight. And <laughs> like, she's like, you just, it's just going to be late, but they're going to call you. They, they call before, like, like, right after 10 o'clock or something, but you just know. But I think when you stick to things, though, and you just don't, because it's, it's, it's rough. Like, even now, people think, well, why are we, why are we back on TV, or why they don't reboot? Like, I can just flip the switch, the switch, and, like, you know, y'all might love me, but the industry ain't, don't think I'm that big of a deal. Like, they like, well, what have you done lately? Like, what is going on? Y'all, meanwhile, I'm being a mom. Fans still like, we still love you. We did the show. And then the industry, like, it don't matter. This resume is short. <laughs> like, what's your real looking like these days? Like, mm -hmm. so it's two different energies you're dealing with. So it's still a struggle. It is, but when you stick with it, that's when you know. No. I think for me, my moment was, um, my very first film um, in 2016, um, they did horror on the production. Um, I had, it was probably one of the biggest premieres in the city. And for me to be a first time filmmaker, I had over 400 people that come to a premiere. Um, the girl who played the lead, my friend Rora, was filming for my current situation on BET. So BET was there filming. And I walked in, and all these people there, and I literally came to look at, I'm just, I'm panicking. Um, because I was just like, fuck. <laughs> you know, because I had anxiety and I didn't realize I had it that bad until that night when I saw these people. Like, I came in and I was like, I'm like hey y'all. And I'm like, put my head down, I'm like, going to the back, like, because at this time I was just like, I can't believe this many people came. I was like, they didn't even know me in this city. It was hilarious that everything. It's my Bad Girls Club. So, Blue from Bad Girls Club played in that film. Um, so, Stevie Bass is there. Um, just so many. My Bishop, Bishop Lenny Martin, he's. One of the top gossip singers in the industry. He was everybody was freaking there. And I said, what the hell is this? And y'all, they had did a horrible job on my production. Sound was terrible. It like it wasn't even ready to be shown. And we, I was so there. I literally cried the night before and told my best friend who came to town like, oh, I'm not going to that. Because this does not represent who I am. This is not me. I'm not going. And I was going to go to my own premiere. And I called the producers and I said, fuck this, I'm not coming. Because this is not what I'm supposed to have. Now, mind you, this is the same team that were even nominated. I said, so how the fuck did we end up with this? Excuse my language. So, in that moment, though, that night when I saw all those people there, 
who supported me, they didn't care what the family looked like. I realized that these people loved me. They were there because they wanted to see me do well. They had my back. And regardless if I gave them a complete trash because I did, they laughed. They had a good time. Everybody was asking to take pictures of me. I'm on my first TV show. Like, y'all, it was the biggest night of my life. And in that moment, I realized that I'm doing this uh, not just for me, but for the people who love me and the people who have pushed me all these years, who see me start out doing a stage play in the pool pit at my church, who see me start there to here, and all these people are here to support me. And I was just like, this is my moment. This is when I realized, like, this is God, man. This is what God wants from me. And even though I started out, it started out really sketchy. As she said, it's still an everyday decision. Every day, when you first said it, I got emotional because I thought, like, every day is a decision to wake up and still want to continue to pursue your dreams when things don't always work out the way you want them to. So, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, I'm going to help it. Yeah. Before I forget to start real quick, though, but God will do just enough for the spirit, however high power, however you say it, so much, whatever. Um, he will do just enough, though, to keep you in the game. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So even with, like, Shark Tank, like, being able, I ain't got no business degree. What I did was I went to the Small Business Development Center, found me some free counseling, and I sat with him four hours a day. And I was like, I need this, I need that, I don't know this. He's like, I know Oh, I was like, I'm gonna sit here with you for a while. What are we gonna do? Yes, and then when I went on there, I showed up and showed out, got an offer from Barbara, and then we closed that deal. I was negotiating for six months. So a lot of people, I did an article with Cosmo and explained that, but a lot of people still think I got to deal with Shark Tank, and I'm million right now. But it's like, so it's a struggle, you know, still to kind of keep up with the man, keep up with whatever. It's like, you know, running this billion dollar business on the street, like, like it's, it's literally happening like that. But it's like, but, but he did just enough though to keep me in the game because there haven't been enough odds. So you have to look at things like that sometimes, balance it out. Like, okay, but this wouldn't happen though. He don't do that. He don't play tricks with you. And y'all, I'm not part of the stuff we gave, but it is so funny to me. And I'm just saying, I'm saying this as a joke because I'm silly. She created grease bags. Y'all know, like, you have that like, grease when you cook. you like, what the hell am I going to put this in? She came up, like, this is the very old idea. She came up with a grease bag. I thought it was dumb. I didn't say that. At the time, because I wanted to um, do photo shoots with me. Um, once I got, and this whole time I'm still in the fire service, I just started sending off, putting my pictures on the internet, and everything like this is before Instagram. You know, I don't think it's really that popular. You know, but this is like Facebook. <laughs> and that, those pictures is what kind of landed me the first thing that I did for um, Lost Resort. The, you know, those pictures that I took. Um, and making money, a little bit of money outside the fire department and was able to myself. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like a man.